Storage is a very important issue to me. Uh, I've stored food for years, but it has been very enlightening for me to learn some factors about it, to learn what to do best, and to just reaffirm to myself how important it is. Uh, about three years ago, USDA uh, gave us a little grant money and asked us to do some real research, find some factors, and get them all compiled. There's some knowledge out there. Uh, lots of things on the internet, and all of it may not be factual. And so we are in the process of compiling uh, the, the food storage book, which I'll tell you about kind of at the end. But know that, uh, that we are really working on it because food storage is important to us. When I talk about food storage, I'm talking about long term that you store. And so many of you may think, I've had that for a long time. Am I ever going to use it? How many of you have had some food storage for over 30 years? Have you opened any of it? Good. How many of you have some food storage that you wonder if you will be any good when you do open it? So we want to be able to know those things. So ask yourself this. Will I have enough? Will it be any good? And what am I going to do with it to use it? Okay, so will I have enough? How many of you feel you have enough food storage at home right now in the event of a disaster? Good, good. Because it's hard to know if you have enough and then how much you're going to have to share with somebody else who doesn't have enough. You want it to be good and you want to know how to use it. Food storage is important because it really is a life-sustaining factor in an, in an event of a disaster. I used to uh, go to conferences with the Extension Disaster Network and they'd always say, you people in Utah are kind of crazy. You store a lot of long-term food. How come? They don't say that to me anymore because they become, they have learned if terrorists wanted to uh, take care of America, all they'd have to do is contaminate our food sources. Or if transportation is down or if power is down, Long term, you can see that we could be in trouble in being able to go to the grocery store and get the things we need. So it is sustainable. However, there are some true factors we're going to talk about today that are going to make the difference in if your food is good or not. And we do that in temperature, oxygen, light, moisture, and infestation. And I will address those as we go on. First of all, what do you need? We know that you need 500 pounds of food per person a year. So when you buy the little tiny packs and they say good for a year, think about it. 500 pounds. Now, yes, you're going to be adding some water, but, but you need it to be about that much. So as you start to say, do I have enough food, think about it. Have you got 500 pounds worth of food, even when it's reconstituted? And that would generally be enough food to maintain a 2,000 calorie a day, 1,500 to 2,000. In the event of a disaster, an emergency, sometimes it's nice to consume more than 2,000 a day just because of the stress factor. But that's what you need. As I start, though, to build my food storage supply, 500 pounds is kind of overwhelming at first, so I'm going to look at what do I have immediately in a 72-hour kit. Do I have some short-term usage foods? Uh, gotta find those. Food that I know will still be good if it's put away for a year, easy to use. If I have some canned goods in there, I may have to make sure I have a can opener. But something for two, for 72 hours. So once I have 72 hours put away for my family, then I start to say, what have I got now for the next two weeks? If it was short-term, power was out, a minor disaster, I can't get to the store, do I have food on the shelf for my family? That would be things like peanut butter, corn, soup, spaghetti sauce. And then I look down the road at, okay, three months. Those would be the same kind of foods I would want for two weeks, 
but maybe in case lot and large quantities of it. These are the things that you would buy a case of, and it might still be the spaghetti sauce. It might be your tuna fish, um, macaroni and cheese, but foods that your family would eat, and it would be a three-month supply. And now after I'm good, I've got my three months in there, I start to look at the long-term storage, food that is going to last for a long time, and I want to have nine months to a year. And that becomes a lot of food. So how am I going to store that? What I'm going to do with it is very critical. The kind of food I'm talking about when I start to talk long term are the things like my rice, pasta, oats, beans, rice, any of those kind of foods that I think we'll have a good shelf life on, and we're going to talk about that. But I want to talk about those sustainable foods, foods that I know I can sustain my family with, I can use to make foods, things that I'm going to need. There are five main factors that are going to affect my food storage now. We will talk about each of them, but overall, temperature, moisture, oxygen, light, and then the infestation of those little pesky buckets. But these are the factors that now I have my food storage, it's purchased, if I want it to be any good, and I want to be able to use it, I've got to make sure that I'm caring for it in the right way. Number one, biggest factor there is, and that is the temperature of where your foods are stored. And this becomes a real problem because some of us don't have the option of where to put it. So if, if I can store my food at 40 degrees temperature, Look at that shelf life, a good 40 years. And that's research, and we know that. So something 40 degrees, it's got a really, really good shelf life. But that's hard to do. In fact, I, I had a gentleman call me and wanted me to check his mother's can of, of canned meat that was 39 years old. And I said, no, I don't even want to take it, see it. Just throw it away. And he said, no, you want to see it. I said, no, I don't. He said, yes, you do. And I said, bring it on in. So he brought it in. It had been stored in a root cellar at 43 degrees, no humidity. The color was beautiful. The fat was still pure white, had not even moved. And the seal was vacuum, strong, strong vacuum. There's no reason why that wouldn't have been an excellent quality food to still eat. Now, I'm not recommending for you to store your home canned goods for 39 years, but but I am letting you know that stored in the right conditions, that was low temperature, low oxygen, low moisture, it had a good shelf life. But look what happens to heat. I live in St. George, and if I were to store foods in my garage in the summertime, they're way down there at 100, 110 degrees. Look what happens to that shelf life. Even if it's only four months, I've certainly made that go from 40 years to a year. Major factor. How many of you store your foods in a garage? And, and even in the northern area, it may not be 110 degrees in the summer in your garage, but still you're going to hit some higher heat. So you want to try and not have to store there in the garage. Most of us in our homes are storing food at about 70 degrees. And so that's going to affect, it's going to give us about 10 years on many of the things we buy. Some things like wheat and rice are still going to give you 30 years at 70 degrees. But once you start getting higher than that, it really does affect the shelf life. So know that that is very, very critical. If you spend a lot of money for food storage, try to make sure that it's stored in a fairly low temperature. Next, you want to make sure that you're getting rid of as much of the moisture as you can. When you buy foods, they've got about 98% of the, the water taken out if it's dehydrated or freeze-dried. Uh, us that do it at home, about 90% of the water is out, and that's still, that's still good, but the more moisture that's out makes it longer-term storage. When you have moisture, bacteria can grow, so you want to make sure your moisture is removed. 
Uh, in humidity areas, uh, sometimes that's really hard, but glass is always a good thing to store in in high humidities because it can't come through. Uh, in high humidity, sometimes your cans can rust on you. But uh, so glass is a good one for there. The third factor that really affects my food storage is that of oxygen. Food that has a lot of oxygen in it or is exposed to the oxygen will discolor. It's going to lose its flavor over time. Recidity really comes into it. That oxygen is what causes that rancidness to come. And if you open something and it smells rancid, that means there's some contamination and don't eat it. Long-term recidity can cause cancer. You would have to eat a lot of rancid foods to get that, but, but just know that you don't want to eat it if it's rancid. So you want to make sure that oxygen has been removed. Now, oftentimes when you buy foods, you're going to buy a freeze-dried or dehydrated or a lot of things, and inside they're going to have the little oxygen absorbers. And that's a, that's a good way to buy them. That's just as a protection to keep the oxygen down. However, you do have to be a little bit wise in using them because if the moisture content is high in some foods, you remove the oxygen, and now you've made a wonderful condition where botulism can grow. So if you are using these, be sure that you really check in that you're going to use them right. Know that once they've been out and opened, they're spent, they're not going to be any good. So make sure you follow. Uh, when I purchase mine, now these have been carried around and they've been opened and closed, so actually I doubt that they have much value in them anymore, but you would want to keep them in a, in a container that they can be sealed, put away, and keep them in the dark too, okay? So if you buy big ones to do in your home storage. And then make sure your oxygen is removed. Okay, Some things certainly don't need oxygen removers. Uh, sugar, that certainly doesn't. But some foods that you want to put them in. But just know that if it's not dry enough and you put it in, it is a real situation where botulism can grow, which you truly don't want. The next factor is that of light, sunlight, uh, rather direct or indirect, and even home lighting can destroy nutritional value and help in the degeneration of foods. It will affect the quality, the taste, the appearance, and so always you want to try and store your food in dark containers and in dark areas. Uh, that dark little picture there is a nice little dark pantry or storage room, or root cellar, which is great. Some of the ways you buy canned food or you buy food makes a difference. Now, these are certainly light barrier. You know, the light is going to stay out of these. My mylar patches, the light's going to stay out of those. But now, if I buy in my, in my buckets, light penetrates here. There's light inside. So, so that's something that I would now, when I store it away, I'm going to want to store it in a room that's going to be uh, safer from the light. Also, you may want to keep your cans in the cardboard boxes they come in. One of the good things on, on your canning jars, put them back in a box. Do anything you can to keep the light away from them, and that's going to improve the longevity of it and the quality of it. So where you store it is important. And now those little bugs that just seem to uh, come around, we might have flies, beetles, moths, weevil, um, there's nothing sadder than to open some of your stored food and find that, that it has weevil or that infestation has occurred. There, you hear of a lot of things. You hear of bay leaves, spearmint gum, but research has not shown those methods to be very effective. If you feel they work for you, that's great. Uh, probably the best way to get rid of it at this point is just a cold treatment, a freezer. I love it in the winter when it gets down to zero, and it doesn't in Washington County, so I can't do that anymore, but I used to live in severe. Uh, because even putting it out where it's safe from insects or things, but, but it's given it a chance to freeze all the way through. So that cold, the cold treatment is probably your best way to get rid of the spores and the, the bugs. 
Other than that, how you store it, where you keep it, is going to make a difference. Storage is very important. Now, we talked about the conditions that affect storage, but what am I going to store it in? Some of the ideal ways are our number 10 cans are an excellent way to store food. They come with the new ones, most all of the new ones today are a food grade can. They come with a lined enamel in it that are going to prevent any acidity interacting with the can and causing uh, any type of blackness. I know a lot of cans, when you open it, uh, they'll be black on the top of the lid, and people would call and say, is my food not any good anymore? And that's just a reaction. But with the enamel lined in most of the new number 10 cans now, that isn't a factor. There are really some new foods out there that are being packed that are a nice way to get them. This is a chicken and pasta with spinach, and it's from a reputable company, and they're telling me 30-year shelf life on it if I store it in good condition. So great, it's all mixed together. Now I really can use this one. Add a little water. But so I want to make sure that, that I'm doing it. Number 10 cans are great. Mylar pouches are an excellent way to store food. They may not take quite as much room. However, the drawback on them is if you even get a pinhole in them, now your oxygen has come out, your moisture can get in, and rodents can also penetrate through some of these. So if you have them just laying out on the floor or something downstairs, mice, squirrels, whatever you have, could penetrate through them. So if you're using mylar, it's an excellent storage. Light cannot get through it. It's a light barrier. But you might want to consider putting it now in some type of a secure container that's going to keep out pinholes and rodents. But it's, it's a good, and foods have a good shelf life that are stored in your mylar. Uh, your MREs are packed inside. It's about five to seven shelf life is what most of them tell us. And you'll even buy foods that are, are packed in types of like this where the oxygen has been removed to, to make it last. Surely, if I'm going to put things on the shelf and I'm not going to have them in a long-term package, they're not going to have as good a shelf life. Pasta has a wonderful shelf life if it's put away carefully, a good 30 years on it. But if I just set it on the shelf in this, the light will get to it, the quality of it, it's going to, it may still be safe to use, but the quality of it certainly won't be as good 30 years from now. The same thing with my beans. In fact, even beginning to reconstitute them, if I just leave them in a bag for 30 years, will be hard. My rice has a really good shelf life if it is white rice. You don't want to store brown. Brown has a lot of oil in, and it's only going to be good for a sh much shorter, maybe maybe two years if you get that much out of it. So long-term storage. Rice is an excellent food to have, but you want to store it in a good, good container. And also oats, a wonderful way to store. The next ways I look at storing are peat containers. And peat containers are your plastics, and they do have a number on the bottom of them. And I know that there's a lot of talk about plastics out there. You know, I don't know if I want to store my food in plastic. Is there leakage? Is there contaminants coming out? And in today's world, there's contaminants in most of the things we even use. So, so that will have to be your decision. But the peat containers that are probably the best to use will be 1, 2, and 5, the numbers on the bottom. Fives are a little cloudy. They help uh, as a barrier to keep the light out a little bit more. Twos are food grade, but they're a soft plastic, and that is much like your milk cartons, milk jugs. And we do not recommend restoring in milk jugs. First of all, it is a soft plastic. It will leak on you in a number of years. Second of all, you're not going to get those milk proteins out of them. They're just not going to come out, and so you're going to have some contamination there. So I would just recommend not using milk jugs at all as a store in. Clorox jugs, uh, you, you don't want to eat the food in it. If you're storing water to wash your hands with, fine, but not to reuse or eat. Did you have a question, sir? It is. No. Two-liter jugs, like your pop, are not, they're going to be made out of your number one, Pete, 
and they are reusable. They're not soft. That's much, much better choice to store in those than it is to store into your, your milk jugs, okay? Just rinse them out good. What? One, two, and five are food grade for reusable. Okay, your Mylar pouches I, pouches I talked about, those and they are good. Glass jars are always a great way to store. They are. Um, especially if you just have some sitting there empty, fill them up with water. Uh, water bath can them for 10 minutes, 12 minutes. You've got a good seal on them. You've got an indefinite shelf life on that water. You don't have to worry about rotating it at all in those glass jars. The fillable buckets are nice, especially if they've got your gamma lids on them. That's a good, nice, tight seal. So uh, that's a great way to store. Um, oftentimes you'll buy foods that come in these. Uh, if not, you may just want to get them to put your things in. As I said before, you know, if you buy the packaged goods, you don't have the money to invest in big batches of food storage, but you want to start on a small level. You know, buying a package of beans, rice, Put them away in a good container. They're going to give you a good shelf life. Would you open one of the number checks for me because of what the bean is going to be? Mm -hmm. Then you start it. You then know, your shelf. Then it's a problem. Yep. So if you empty the rest of it there, you know, for the meat, you have a loose one. You empty that into a Ziploc jar with the oxygen thing. You bet. That would be a great way to keep it. If I just put this on the shelf now that it's open, I've got about six months on it, really. Not, not much longer than that, but, but a good way is to reseal it in your number 10 cans. Um, I have taken some and frozen them in the deep freeze, you know, if I wanted to. But, but once you open them, you have broken the seal, and your shelf life then just becomes a normal dried food on the shelf. Um, milk products. This is great if I'm going to use it within just a few months' time. But if I want long-term milk storage, then I've got to make sure it's in containers that I'm going to feel good about. Yes? No, no, you do not. And in fact, if you are storing water, like in the last one in the big plastic drums and 50 pounds, if you're using a city water that's already treated, you do not need to treat it. Bleach dissipates with time, and so it's, it's not there anyway. But uh, about seven, eight years ago, we brought water in that had been stored for 20 years throughout Utah and with very, very little amounts of bacteria that had grown. Now, water is certainly best used if you rotate it every six months. Absolutely. Nice quality. But I know when you put it in those big blue drums, it's hard to rotate it, isn't it? But... If you are concerned about it when you open it, then go ahead and treat it. But you certainly wouldn't. I wouldn't treat it to put it in my glass jars. Absolutely not. Uh, dropping a couple of silver hot dollars is always in the fall. Will it? Hmm. Okay. A I, couple. I keep a five-gallon jug of water in the back of my Jeep, uh -huh. and I change it every six months, and I have a silver dollar in the bottom of it. Uh -huh. Every time I change it, I taste it. And it, it, it tastes good. If you didn't hear that, he's talking about a silver dollar in the, in the bottom of his water containers that he's storing. And, and that's kind of like, you know, you can buy the silver, what's it called, drops and treatments and things. But, and besides that, you've always got a dollar. So, gosh, you can't beat that deal. Uh, home canned, we did talk about it a little bit. Uh, Melanie just did a presentation before me, but... The USDA guidelines, the National Center for Home Preservation, food home canning guidelines have changed. But if you've canned them, they're canned properly, they're stored in a nice, cool place, you've got a long-term shelf, long-life long product. Okay, so how long will it really and truly last? If it is dairy with fat, five years, okay? So if I just buy a can, even if it's in my number 10 can, if it has fat, I'm talking five years. In fact, most anything that has fat in it, you're only going to get about five-year shelf life with it. Fat just does go rancid. Even if it doesn't have oxygen, it just does not have as good a shelf life. I know that some of the research says virgin olive oil has a better shelf life if you buy a good quality. 
I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't used any that's been 10 years old yet, so I just don't know. But if I'm going to buy a non-fat milk product, it's in a number 10 can, it's going to last me at least 20 years, at least, depending on the storage factors now. My dried fruits and vegetables, 20 years. The exception on that is if I have dehydrated dried tomatoes. Now, if I'm using a dry, dried tomato product that I buy in a can, once it's been dried and dehydrated and, and like a powder, that seems to have a good shelf life. It doesn't seem to cause the acid interaction for some reason. But if it's just whole tomatoes that I've dried myself and at home, they, they will interact with things and not have the shelf life that the other fruits and vegetables will have. The fruits and vegetables, easy, 20 years on to 30 years, still going to be good. Things like my carrots, my apple slices, uh, oats, rice, wheat, long term, yes. You know, it, you probably won't get as much moisture out of them. So the quality long term is going to be harder to keep. And then depending how you store them, you know, are you going to use a seal a meal? Now, and that's one thing you have to worry about because if I home dry them, I wouldn't put an oxygen pack in and seal a meal it because I'm just not secure enough that I've got enough of the water out of it. Okay? Yes? Well, I, if mold is growing on it or type thing, moisture. Now, if like the can, the seal is broken, I, when I taste it or if I smell it, I'm going to know. It's not going to be a safety factor, okay? Because there's nothing in that corn that can grow harmful things for me, you know. It can mold. There might be bacteria. But I'm going to see it and I'm going to know it. But it's going to be flavor after after that many years. And people say if there's an emergency, they'll eat it if, it doesn't, if it's rancid and doesn't taste. But I've heard people say that it will not be eaten. We haven't, I haven't been there yet, so I don't know. But you'll know. You know, I, I had one can of corn that I've set on the cupboard now for over a year because I want to see the difference in the one in the control and the others. And I, I start to get that smell in it that tells me, hmm, it's not going to be my first choice. Okay. Wheat has been stored in the tombs in Egypt for hundreds, thousands of years, and it's good. I have people call me all the time. They say, I've had wheat for 50 years. I've moved five times. Should I dump it? And I'll just say, not unless you're going to replenish it, I wouldn't. It's got, a, it's got some value, nutritional value for years. Yes. So it's kind of a bubbling effect, huh? Probably not. Honey is supposed to have an indefinite shelf life. Uh, what it's stored in is going to make a difference if it interacts with acid and goes black. Crystallized honey, you want it to crystallize because that's going to make it last longer. Uh, I don't know that I can answer that really well. We had honey for years with honeybees, and I didn't ever see the bubbling or the running out. You know, it's still safe. It's a quality thing then, but it is still safe. Yeah, it will interact. I like it in glass jars, the very best to store, or, or the nice plastic tub. Cans, it, yeah. Uh, dried fruits and vegetables, the yost, those things, long shelf life. What? 
I'm guessing with wheat, it's going to last a long, long time. You know, if it's going to rehydrate, it's going to have some sustainable life, even in a plastic bag. The fact that, you know, thousands of years we've seen it. The quality may not be as good. It may have a hard time rehydrating. But even in a plastic bag, I, you know, sitting on a shelf, but, but, you know, if it's in a fairly good container, I think you've still got some years of it. I wouldn't throw wheat away. I, I just probably really wouldn't. Hard to keep it all, but sustainable. The rice, beans, oats, pasta, sugar is in a definite shelf life that may go hard on you. It has no nutritional fa value. It has no safety factors. It's just simply a quality of the food that you want to add to it. Dried milk. Now, don't forget, you need salt, soda, cornstarch. And when you start to talk about those, uh, those are pretty essential things. Your body needs salt, and you need the iodized. So make sure that as you purchase some that you've got iodized salt. The iodized are those little floaters in canned goods. They are certainly not harmful. A lot of people will can with a canning salt or an iodized, but you can certainly use table salt for canning too. But that is real critical for, for our thyroids and things that we have some iodine in our, in our storage. You want to have cornstarch. They have good shelf life. They're going to last a long time. Your dried fruits, any of those things you, you want to have in there. Water, uh, make sure you've got a supply, a gallon a person a day. That's just survival. Often I'll get asked the difference of a dehydrated and a freeze-dried food. And there's certainly a difference if you're buying it. We cannot freeze-dry our own foods. That is a commercial uh, production. And uh, it, it, does, it is no safer. Freeze-dried and dehydrated are about the same, but freeze-dried maintains the flavor a little bit better. It will also hydrate faster. But it's going to cost you two to three times more, too, when you purchase it. So know that if you're buying these, this corn is uh, freeze-dried, but I also buy dehydrated. But when constituting it, it takes almost twice as long in just hot boiling water. So whatever you're trying to do on that may be a factor. One of the things I, I like to do is, uh, where did it go? Is one way to prepare and use food storage is uh, called... The hot bag method. Uh-oh. Boy, I went backwards the wrong way. Oh. I'll come back to that. That is rehydrated. This is a corn and chicken and carrots. And then I would simply add, in one this size, about three-fourths to a cup of water. I would put it in an oven mitt for about 10 minutes, and it's hydrated. So in the event of a disaster, there's a great way that all I have to do is add some hot water to this little bag and uh, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and I've made a nice little meal. There are some recipes, and in the handout there, there's a few of them. I do have these few bags if any of you want to take one and try it. Three-fourths to one cup of hot water, and you can give that a try. Uh, this is our... Uh, our publication, we had hoped that it would be out by now, but it's still under peer review. This is going to have the most current, up-to-date, food storage, long-term information that's out there. Uh, you, you know, you people used to say we're crazy in Utah, we store everything, and now they're saying, give us your information, give us your information. And so Alaska calls me about every six months, have you got it ready yet? So uh, I think if you... Uh, Send an email, and also you can just go to Utah State University's website and look for their food storage, and it will be there. Using it's going to be critical. What kind of recipes do you have? Uh, I would have a book with a lot of bean recipes. One of the recipes I gave you is a favorite rice and, uh, and bean cookbook. Pe beans have such a good, good source of protein that they're a wonderful food to store, a wonderful food to use, and your bodies handle it well. Now, if you haven't used any wheat and all you have stored is wheat, your body's going to have a little difficult time. But adding some beans and rice is going to make a real difference. Uh, Utah State has some uh, things like this on the website. But there are a lot of books out there, too, that you can purchase. I saw some great ones in the vendors today using your food storage. So have some ideas. When you start to make your list, 
Get some ideas. What do you want? Now, my beans and rice, I love the celery in it, so I better make sure I've got a can of dehydrated celery when it comes time to use it. Some of the new things that are out there in food storage, uh, dehydrated jalapenos. They're brand new. Thought, gosh, who would have done that? But what a nice flavor. Uh, there's a dehydrated pizza sauce. Now pizza seasoning. That's just... So look around and see. There's some good vendors that have been there for a long time. Certainly Rainy Day Foods has been out there for a really long time. Uh, Mountain House has been there for a long time. Those are vendors that you can trust their information. A lot of the brand new ones out there have not been able to do any testing yet long term. So you, we just have to watch and see what happens. You'll have to use judgment on those. Uh, it, it depends where you store them. If you store them, same thing. Heat is a real factor. If you put some in your hand and you can go like this and you get a little aroma and smell, it's certainly going to have flavor. But if it's been sitting out just on a shelf in a little spin spice rack for 20 years, probably not much there. Okay? Things like paprika, the red ones, they're best kept in the fridge because of that color, but, but spices have a long time. One I want you to try today, this is a brand new product, good vendor, and they're telling me 20 years, yogurt. So there's a new great way. So you may want to try this before you go home. It's really yummy. So I was just pleased to find new, new ones. Uh, in just a minute, who's got the time? 22? Okay, we got time to do it. We're going to do a little game, and this will be my first one, but this is one of the newest uh, nutritional bars out there, and I love it because I've been guaranteed that it's got a 10-year shelf life and even five in the back of my car in St. George. Now, that's wonderful to have something I can put in my emergency pack for five years, and it's pretty tasty, and it's not terribly expensive. So keep watching. There's new products that come out there. But use judgment and, and check into the reputableness of companies because some companies say our stuff's good for 30 years and they're not even there in another year. So you want to make sure they've been around and that some of it knows what they're doing. What? Is this? It is called a New Millennium Bar. And you do. Families need to be sustainable for at least 72 to 96 hours. And then long term. What did you say? She wanted to know what your oh. factor was. Yeah. Yeah. They, they are. They're coming out. Do you feel the same thing, Shelf Life? I keep those in my backpack in the back of my house. I go hiking a lot. I'm a photographer. I've never let that out. Yep. Back in my car. I know. I bought him for my stepson because he loves to go out in the woods. And I said, now these are for an emergency. He came back the next week and he said, can you get me some more of those? I said, Michael, they're for an emergency. He said, how was I going to know if I liked them? He said, I like them. And there's about 12 flavors. They, they, they come in a, a thousand to a case. So it's a hard thing to buy case anyplace else unless you buy them. I don't know. Maybe you guys can get them cheaper. Individually. Yeah, that's these. I buy them individually. But yeah. So, yeah, they are. So uh, I, I think there are some good new products out there that, that I'm get happy with every now and again. So anyway, since he kind of told us, now we can't, we, I was going to do, who wants to guess the price on this? <laughs> oh, but before we start the prices right, I need my first commercial. Okay, commercial? Rocky Road. Okay, so he says it's a little over a dollar. Anybody want to make a guess? Right back here. A dollar ten higher. Oh, nine for nine ninety-five. I paid a dollar twenty-nine individually. Nine for nine ninety-nine. Well, nine ninety-five. That's just, that's about the same. So it's it's a good price. Yeah. 
but they're a great product. So since uh, you already have nine, we'll let you have the tenth one right here. <laughs> okay, let's have the Snicker commercial. So higher and lower. Let's see. Okay, who's going to bid for me? Who have I got that's higher or lower wants to play the game? Okay. All right. I'm going to show you this first aid kit. And I'm going to tell you that it's $7.95, higher or lower. Lower? Okay, she's saying lower on that one, so let's wait and see how many she gets right. Can't tell you yet. A face mask at 225. Lower. A survival blanket at $1.75. Higher. Lower. Yeah, you're true. And a whistle for 35 cents. You're right. So that one's right. So she got three out of four. So her prize is... one of the nutritional bars. I'm really happy with them. They're just, I just think it's so great to have something that's long-term. Okay, our last commercial. Okay. Well, I do want you to come and try this yogurt if you haven't tried any. It's it's just a great new product. I'm happy I'm happy about it. And are there any other questions? Okay, yes. Oh, good question. You know what? I I think each family should have about two hundred dollars worth of cash. About fifty dollars a person's a good place to start. And make sure it's in small bales. Uh, the Scylla meals, uh, they're going to prolong some of the shelf life. Yep. They're going to they're gonna help it. You know, the same thing, they may not keep the seal as long as some things, but, but they certainly, you know, they're, they're going to help things, yes. I know. It's so critical that you, I, and sometimes I have those things with me, and I don't today. We have a, a packet that you can go ahead and start filling out. But it's so critical that if something were to happen to you, do your children know? One of the real disasters in Katrina is how much money has not been reclaimed because nobody knew accounts, passwords, and those kind of things. So you want to have a good place, but you want it in a secure enough place that it's going to be be safe. Uh, one of the other things, as we said, that I did bring is a little Utah Prepares book, so you're welcome to pick up one of those if you want. But, well, you know, and maybe, well, then every six months is a good time to go back through your records and make sure that there's updates because you will have different accounts. You will have different all kinds of things. But, you know, if a spouse dies, so many of us, only one spouse has that information. And then if both of you were to pass away, do your children know how to do it? And if there was a real disaster, then there ought to be a copy out of the area. It ought to be in another state with somebody that you truly trust that has access. Okay? Any other questions? Okay. If not, come and grab you some yogurt. And if any of you want to try one of those little food things, great.